Greetings hobbyists, this is Arthur of Vool, and in this video we're going to make a 3D printable turbine blade. So I've got this jet engine that I've been making here, and I need to get a turbine blade for it. And this is actually a relatively simple thing to do, as long as you know some tricks and you have a good thought process about what you're doing. Before we start, I want to quickly say thanks to the Patreons that are supporting this channel. If you'd be interested in supporting the channel, do head over to Patreon. There's a link at the bottom of the video and in the description. If you head over there now, you can watch this video ad-free, which is always nice, and you'll also get another video as we're always one video ahead. So the first thing we want to do is just bring in a circle. And the important thing about this circle is as many vertices as you've got, you're going to be making half that many blades on your turbine. So 16 blades seems about right, so I'm going to keep that as 32. Then I'm just going to press S to scale that up, and we're going to go into vertex mode. I'm using machine tools. If you don't have machine tools, get it. It's free on Gumroad. Otherwise, just make sure when you tab into edit mode, you're in vertex mode. And then we're going to press F to fill that in. And then we're going to press I to inset those. And I'm going to leave a bit of a gap in the middle. This is where you're going to have your bit that's sort of like the central hub that the blades rotate around. Now, here comes the trick. This is all about selecting every other vertex so you can do this quickly. So we're going to do the ones in the middle first. All you do is select, check a deselect, and make sure you've got this set as one to one. And then I'm going to rotate this around the z-axis, which isn't actually shown on here but the z-axis is just there, so we want to rotate around this blue one. So I'm gonna press R to rotate, and then Z to lock it to the z-axis. And I don't wanna guess this, I want to know that those vertices are exactly on top of each other. So once I've clicked, I'm gonna to come to the box at the bottom. If it's smaller, you just need to click to make sure it's larger. As long as you've clicked on nothing else, that'll be there. And we're gonna do 360, the number of degrees in a circle, divided by 32. So 32 is the number of vertices that there were. If you've done a different number of vertices, then you need to change that number. Hit enter, and it's now exactly on top. Now this does leave us with a slight problem in that we've got two vertices sitting on top of each other, but we're gonna deal with that problem a little bit later. Just so we do it all in one go, because we're gonna create more issues like that in a second. Then I'm gonna press Alt and select the outer circle, and I want to do the same thing. So select, check a deselect, and in this instance, we've got the right one being selected. We want the ones that are now at an angle here. If you don't have this, for example, if I just press offset, you'll notice it goes one across. You'll use the offset button to get that to the right place. So you can go either way. So we want these. And again, we're going to R and Z to rotate them around. And once again, we want 360 divided by 32. We've now got these vertices on top of each other. Now you do have to do these one at a time. You can't do that all together. If you just select all your vertices and check a deselect, it does this annoying thing where it selects alternative ones. So that's not really an option there. Then we just want to do G to move them and we're gonna press Z to move them directly upwards. And this is how you decide how extreme you want your turbine blades to be. I'm gonna to go to somewhere about there, I think. And then we need to turn this into a solid object. And this is actually easier to do at this point because it saved you time having to select lots of vertices. Otherwise, if you've got this as a cylinder to begin with, this does become a pain and you spend a lot of time selecting everything. So trust me, this is the faster way. So I'm gonna Alt select the outside edge again and I'm just gonna press E and Z to extrude those down. And then we want to make this all lined up so I'm going to press S and Z. Notice we've only got the ones at the bottom, which are selected. And once we're scaling, if we just press zero, it'll scale everything flat. Now, while this looks very nice, we've got a lot of problems here. The first, we already mentioned, we've got these overlapping vertices here. We've got a bigger problem in terms of making this a manifold object for 3D printing. If I go into edge mode and try to select this edge, we've got one edge there, one edge there. We've also got a hidden edge that's underneath this. If I go to vertex mode and G, you can see that there's this hidden edge that goes all the way through this in one go. And we need to resolve that, otherwise this is going to be a massive problem. There we go, we can see the edge there. So this big edge there that's going through everything and it's not being cut by the vertex that is there. So this actually isn't too bad to solve. What we need to do is take that long edge, cut it in half, and then bring that up to that point and then bring everything together. So we'll merge the vertices. Now the quickest way to do this is not bothering trying to select every other long edge, is just to accept that there's lots of edges on top of each other and cut all of them. So I'm gonna to go to K for the knife tool, click, 
and then I'm going to check what axis I'm on. So up here, so I want to go straight along the X axis, so it's flat. And then to make sure it's gonna cut through everything, you can see that there's some edges like this one here that's not being cut through. And it would only cut through this side as well, not the ones on the other side we can't see. So I'm gonna press C, and now that will cut through everything. Click, and then hit Enter. You do have to click first before you hit Enter, and now you'll see everything's there. Then all we need to do is select these vertices, for some reason I've got one up there selected, so I'm just gonna select these again. And then we're gonna go into snapping mode, make sure this is on vertices, and then I'm gonna press G and Z, and then now everything is snapping to those vertices here. And we've got now, well, many vertices on top of each other there. We've got one there, another one there, and then a third one there. So at the moment we've got three vertices on top of each other there, and then two vertices on top of each other in each of those places. And we've actually got, I think, two here as well. So there's loads of vertices on top of each other. But this is really easy to solve. Just press A, M, and then this is our merge tool, and we just click by distance. Now that's taken 64 vertices, and sometimes this does have a slight issue with things being, while they should be perfectly aligned, being such a microscopic amount out that it doesn't register. So I'll generally to that up to 0 0.01. Now actually that's keeping the same, mine seems to have worked fine, but if you're having an issue, that is the way to go. You can just sort of select that up a little bit. If you go too far, it is gonna start merging everything together there, which is gonna be, well, messy. So don't do that. You'll notice we've got some blades that are square and some that are triangular shaped, so we don't want that. Okay, make sure you're paying attention to what you're doing. 0 0.01 should be fine. And then once we've done that, if we click on a vertex and then G to move it, you'll notice everything is connected nicely. So we've got no problem there. Then we're gonna Alt select the bottom, press F to fill that in. And then importantly, I'm gonna go here and click on face orientation and my faces are correctly oriented. Now, just in case something's happened where one of yours isn't, it would likely be the bottom one, by the way. I'm just gonna go into face mode, mesh, normals, and then flip that. So you'll notice that your mesh will be in a different color. I've set mine to be purple on the inside. Yours will probably be glowing red and all of your other faces will be blue to say that they're the right way round. I find that really annoying as a way to look at it. So I've swapped the settings out there so effectively my ones that the right way around are just viewed normally and then this one is going to be the one that's colored so all you need to do is go into vertex mode a and then just press shift and n and it will recalculate the outside normals and then you've got everything sorted so if that is a problem for you i'm just going to turn off that face orientation that is the way to solve that so there we go we've got our turbine blade there if you want to you can just come into face mode and either select that so i can extrude that up probably needs to turn snapping off actually. So E to move that up, and then you can B to bevel that if you want to, to make your sort of inner hub that goes round. You might want to actually do this as a totally separate object so you can get it more rounded than that as well. That's also a good option there. So for example, I might want to just come into object mode, shift and A, mesh and bring in a cylinder. Let's, that's probably too high. Let's go with 64 and then edge select shift and B and we'll do something like that okay and then I can just boolean those together and apply it and then we've got that sorted and then we just need to put it in place so I'm just going to rotate that round by 90 degrees minus to have it the correct way round I'm going to shift select that and using machine tools I'm going to use the align feature which will get that in place and then I can just select that G to move it and Y back. And we've got our turbine blade in place. It's really easy to do, no problems. All of these are solid objects. So we'll just be able to Boolean those together as and when we choose. Obviously I can decide how far in or far out I want that to be. One thing I will quickly mention is that I've got this internal hole in the middle of mine that was there beforehand. So it is worth going in and grabbing these vertices and then G and Y those back. So you know you're gonna make a perfectly solid shape with no hole in the middle. Otherwise, when you come to 3D print this, you'll end up with a cavity where resin will get stuck and then it will destroy your print later. So just be careful with that. You can always extend that to be longer if you want to, to solve that problem. If you found that useful, please do hit the like button. It really helps to get the channel shared around. Subscribe if you're not subscribed, and if you are interested in that Patreon, please do head on over. All of that support is really, really appreciated, and it's great to hear what people think when they're over there. Have a great day, guys.